there was a lot of people in Louisiana that uh, called people Bocephus. You know, and I was born in Shreveport. But Rod Brasfield had a little dummy on the Grand Ole Opry, and uh, he called it Bocephus, and they said I would crawl over the floor and grab it and play with it, and I think that had a lot to do with it, too. So that's where it came from. The truth is always stranger than what you can make up. Tim McGraw. Welcome. CMT Giants honoring Hank Williams Jr. Tonight we're here to throw a party, a giant party, for old Bo Cephas. We got a pig in the ground, we got beer on ice, 
and all his rowdy friends are here tonight. And believe me, to get a permit in Hollywood to put a pig in the ground, she got to get pretty rowdy. <laughs> now, Giant, that's the perfect description of Hank Jr.'s career so far. This is the only artist ever to have won Entertainer of the Year, not once, not twice, five times in a row. He sold over 50 million albums, and for nearly two decades, sports fans around the globe have kicked off Monday night with his signature. Are you ready for some football? Now, the fact that Hank Jr. is sitting here at all is nothing short of a miracle. Just go ahead and get comfortable, Hank. When a horrifying mountain fall nearly killed him, rather than give up and walk away, Hank used the tragedy as an opportunity to completely reinvent himself. He went out, rocked things up, and gave country music a good kick in the ass. Which we could use that again, Hank, anytime you're ready. <laughs> Hank, you are a true American icon. And personally, personally, I grew up listening to your music. I played your songs. I cut my teeth on your songs. And I wouldn't be standing here tonight if it wasn't for you. Yeah. Yeah. We gathered your fans, your friends, to celebrate you and your incredible life. You've been entertaining us for nearly five decades. It's a good thing you got a couch. So it's time for you to sit back and enjoy. Tonight is your night, Bocephus. Giants honoring Hank Williams Jr. Performances by Alan Jackson, Brad Paisley, Buddy Guy, Gretchen Wilson, Holly Williams, Kid Rock, Leonard Skinner, Shooter Jennings, Steven Tyler, Tim McGraw, Toby Keith. With special appearances by Al Michaels, Dirks Bentley, the ESPN Monday Night Football Crew, Jessica Simpson, John Madden, Johnny Knoxville, Jimmy Kimmel. Kenny Chesney, Martina McBride, the Pittsburgh Steelers, Terry Bradshaw, and a special performance by Hank Williams Jr. Martina McBride and Toby Keith are coming up. But first, an unforgettable performance by Alan Jackson when CMT Giants honoring Hank Williams Jr. continues. Welcome back to CMT Giants honoring Hank Williams Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, Brad Paisley. The musical forces that came together to create the Hank Williams Jr. sound all began down in the deep south. Well, you learned how to rock and roll from Jerry Lee Lewis and Elvis Presley. He picked up the blues from records of Jimmy Reed, Buddy Guy, Robert Johnson, and blended those influences with the bluesy country music of his father. Then while Hank toured throughout the country, as a teenager, he absorbed all the music that he came across. And he incorporated those sounds into his own musical voice. But that didn't just happen. He may make it look easy, but Hank has spent decades dedicated to his craft. He's written some of the most memorable songs in country music. Songs that give voice to the American everyman. When you're at one of those concerts, you'll see Hank play just about every instrument known to man. Guitar, banjo, fiddle, piano, bass, harmonica, drums, and play them all well. It's undeniable that Hank Williams Jr. has become one of the most influential artists of our time. Any genre of music, anything you can think of. I know everybody on this stage this evening, myself included, 
we would not be doing what we're doing if it hadn't been for him. Thank you, Hank, for being here. Who you are and inspiring all of us. Well, singing one of his favorite Hank songs, Blues Man, please welcome Alan Jackson. The singer, natural born guitar. He's kind of a clinger, the sad old songs. He's not a walk behind her, he's a new note find. Messed up his thinking He was sure singing She came along He was alone in the spotlight Not too much left inside She changed all that one night When she sang this song Baby, I love you Hey, baby, I need you Hey, baby, you ain't got to prove to me You're some kind of macho man You've wasted so much of your life Let me shine a little love light down on that blues man. He got so sick from speed. All the things they said he was need. Just keep on please. Yeah, all of his fans. He got cuffed on dirt roads. He got sued over no shows. She came and took all that old load down off that blues man. And he sang.
acoustic set and I go down to open G and you know uh, or delta tuning or A or an open E da, da, da. that's just natural for me I'm a son of the south like the song said born on the bayou on the Texas line loved in Louisiana and raised on Jambalaya and I don't I don't do opera but I do blues We'll be back with more CMT Giants. Welcome back to CMT Giants, honoring Hank Williams Jr. Johnny knew me from uh, the time I was a very small little baby. I've got pictures of us together at eight years old, ten years old. June Carter's my godmother. Uh, to them, you know, I'm, I'm Bo Cephas. Good old John, he loved outdoors, he loved firearms, he loved Civil War. And me and him were just really into that. Yeah, we didn't talk shop all the time. What's the best bullet Bo Cephas at all? I'd like to have the most accurate uh, 36 caliber because I love cap and ball. <laughs> Just like he's sitting here. He loved it. Cap and ball. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Gretchen Wilson. Hank told me once that he inherited two passions from his daddy. One for music and one for the outdoors. If you think he gets excited about music, you ought to see him out in the woods or on the water. I don't think I've ever met anybody with a deeper love for hunting and fishing than this man right here. He juggles his whole concert schedule around the hunting season. And when he wraps up the show, even if it's midnight, he's jumping on a plane or a bus to make sure he's out in the woods by sunrise. But there's one thing that he loves more than hunting, that's his family. So he combines the two. Most days you'll find him out in the woods with his youngest kids, Sam and Katie, sharing his passion with the next generation. And I gotta tell you, I'm so happy that I was a part of a generation that was touched by Hank's music. From the moment that we first met, I felt like I was a part of the family and I still do. I love you, Hank, thank you. Now I'd like to introduce a few more of your fans singing the number one hit from 1987, Born to Boogie. This is Leonard Skinner. Let us say a little story, huh? About Mr. Bo Cephas, huh? Come on. Well, my mama and my dad are down and out of band. They tied the knots, so here I am. Texas land, love Louisiana, raised on top of land. Now before I could walk, I had a guitar in my hand. By the time I could talk, I had my own band. I went on a road when I was eight years old. When I turned 15, I was still in the show. Money to burn, the girls were pretty. The gin takes on the line.
Giants honoring Hank Williams Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, Dirks Bentley. Randall Hank Williams was only three years old when his legendary father died in the backseat of a blue Cadillac convertible on the way to a New Year's Eve gig in Canton, Ohio. Hank Williams was only 29. Country music lost its biggest star, and Audrey, Hank's widow, figured her son could fill that void. For the next 15 years, she acted as Hank Jr.'s manager, pushing him into performing his father's hits. Crowds went wild with this reincarnation of Hank Williams, and Hank Jr.'s popularity spiked, but not without a steep price. He grew frustrated that his own identity was being stifled. When Hank Jr. was 14, while riding on a tour bus through the hills of Tennessee, he wrote a song that some say defined him. Standing in the Shadows was a top five hit and symbolic of Hank's tough life. At 18, Hank branched out with his own type of music. Audiences walked out of his shows, though. They wanted to hear Hank Williams' music but Hank Jr. had decided to sing his own songs. For nearly a dozen years, he toured and toiled, writing and recording album after album, hoping his music would strike a chord with country music fans. Bocephus began down the same dark, treacherous path that doomed his dad. Kentucky bourbon and bottles of pills became part of Hank's life. Then, in 1979, Hank's fortunes turned around with the song Family Tradition. It was a huge hit, one in which Hank proudly sang about hard living and his daddy's name. He got the opportunity to sing with his dad in 1989 when he recorded the classic song, There's a Tear in My Beer. It was a momentous event for a man who'd come full circle and finally embraced his father's legacy. Congratulations, Hank. Ladies and gentlemen, Shooter Jennings. How y'all doing? You know, Hank and I have a lot in common. We're both so proud to be the sons of country music legends, and we both had a chance to play music with our fathers. But I've got to say that his story about how Hank got to play with his dad is a little more complicated. You see, back in 1951, Hank Sr. recorded a demo of a beer-drinking song called There's a Tear in My Beer. The unmarked recording ended up in an attic in Texas. There it sat, baking and freezing for nearly four decades. <laughs> then in late 1980s, the owner, Bill Lister, who was in Hank Sr.'s band, rediscovered it and gave it to Hank Jr. And thanks to a little digital technology, plenty of creativity, and maybe a little bit of divine help, Hank Jr. finally had a chance to duet with Hank Sr. There's a Tear in My Beer became a huge hit, winning a Grammy Award. The incredible video Hank created for it won Video of the Year. It's an amazing song and an amazing story. Hey, y'all, you gotta understand, 
Hank Jr. means a whole lot to me because I would be like a deer in headlights in this industry if it hadn't have been for him setting, setting the pace, mixing southern rock, rock and roll, and country. Right here on my arm, I've got CBCS tattooed. That means country boy can't survive, right here. That's Mr. Hank Williams Jr. Mr. Bo Sivas right there. And now here to perform, there's a tear in my beer, one of my favorites right now, Mr. Brad Paisley. sit here and drop names. It doesn't matter if it's Keith Richards or Waylon Jennings or Chris Christopherson or uh, 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 Alan Jackson. They just look at him and they, they just, you know, and you say, well, you know, he was 29. Huh? He was 29 when he died? I said, yeah, he's 29. He did it in four years, you know, as far as, although he was singing all the time. It would have to be the most natural songwriting talent in the history of country music, it has to be. Welcome back to CMT Giants. Ladies and gentlemen, Martina McBride. One August day in 1975, Hank's spirit of adventure nearly ended his life. Hank, his friend Dick Willie, and Dick's 11-year-old son Walt wake up early to go sheep hunting along the Continental Divide separating Idaho and Montana. They are 11,000 feet in the air. Hank gingerly steps onto a snowfield placing his feet in the boot prints of Dick and Walt, who have just crossed before him. He gets halfway across, then the ground beneath him gives way. 
Hank tumbles hard and fast, 520 feet down Ajax Mountain. Only a giant gray boulder stops his momentum. When Hank touches his face, he finds that it has been shattered. Miraculously, though, he is alive. Hurting and hopeless, Hank talks to his dad about the demons he has fought much of his adult life. He is certain that he'll never entertain again. He asks God for a second chance to get life right. Hank has said, I felt the despair and self-loathing peel away from me. Thankfully, Hank, God did answer your prayer on Ajax Mountain that August day, and I think he did all of us a favor. I can't imagine the world of music without you, Hank. Congratulations, Hank. We all love you. Going around the mountains there on the Idaho-Montana border, and we were descending, and we're way up high, and uh, it was basically an avalanche. And I went out there, and the whole thing went down, just, just gone. And I said, I'll never be out of here. I didn't know how badly I was hurt, you know. It was a, it was a deal of laying there in the snow and uh, keeping a beat on a rock with one hand, you know. But I really thought I would not make it through that. Uh, and like a lot of the doctors said, you've been, you know, I don't know if you're supposed to count deer or play songs, you've been left here to do something. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the father and son who helped save Hank's life on Ajax Mountain, please welcome his longtime friends, Dick and Walt Willie. I was only 11 years old the day Hank fell, but one look and I knew things were very serious. People do not realize just how badly Hank was hurt that day. When I finally reached him at the bottom of the mountain, I took off my shirt and tied up what was left of his face. Then I left Walt to stay with him while I went to find help. Before Dad left us, he told me, don't let Hank go to sleep, keep talking to him. I talked about everything from football and hunting and how we were going to go fishing that day after he got back. I sat on that mountain for nearly four hours before a rescue helicopter finally found us. They strapped Hank to the ch side of the chopper and flew him away. I still have a note that Hank gave me two days after the fall and it says, Walt, thanks for saving me, Hank Williams Jr. In the months after the accident, the media credited me with saving Hank's life. But I think we all know there was a greater power on that mountain that day that had bigger plans for Hank Williams Jr. Hank, our families have become very close since your accident. We've been through a lot together. You are indeed living proof that a country boy can survive. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Toby Keith. Says it's the end of time, and the Mississippi River sees a going dry. The interest is up, and the stock market's down, and you only get mugged if you go downtown. I live back in the woods, you see, a woman and the kids, and the dogs, and me. Got a shotgun, a rival, and a four-wheel drive. Country boys can survive. 
CMT Giants. Hank, I, I don't know about you guys, but I, I can speak for me. That Monday Night Football theme, you hear it on ringtones, you hear it when you walk in the office, you hear it on Monday nights. And Tony, Jaws goes into this violent reaction when he hears the Are You Ready for he Some Football? He gets spasmodic when <laughs> that does. happens. It's very frightening. You do hear it all over the country. And doing this job the last two years, it gives me shivers. I want to smash my head open like a pumpkin at some time. But it is, it's is—it's got to be the single most recognizable tune right. in the history of sports. No I don't know that there's a category for that, but it's way ahead of everything else. You know, but, but as a player, I remember the song. You know, got you excited as a player. And most of the word spas spasmodic. spasmodic. I, I got to remember that one, Mike. <laughs> Maybe I'll get a little spasmodic when that song comes out tonight. Thanks, Hank. But we want to say congratulations, Hank. We are proud to be a part of Monday Night Football, but you are the biggest piece of Monday Night Football. Hank, the phrase I hear more often than not when people find out I work for Monday Night Football is, are you ready for some football? You have put your signature, your stamp on this game, and we love you for it. 
Hank, I've been a Monday night football fan since I was eight years old, and no one is more synonymous with a big sporting event. I just want to say thanks for all those years of giving me goosebumps and getting us all ready for some football. Please welcome Steven Tyler and blues guitar legend Buddy Guy. Gentlemen, NFL Hall of Famer, legendary Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback, Terry Bradshaw. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Hank, I've always been a huge fan of yours, not just of your music, of course, but as the man who a few hundred million people know as the voice of Monday Night Football. You know, it dawned on me a while back just how much the two of us really are alike. I mean, take for example, your, your favorite football team, Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, uh, my favorite football team, Pittsburgh Steelers. Over my career in, in football, we've been able to win as a team four Super Bowls. And of course, over your career, you were able to win four Emmy Awards. As a country artist, you started out recording your daddy's songs, and uh, as a country artist, I recorded 
one of your daddy's songs. I'm so lonesome, I could cry. <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, excuse me. Uh, did I mention four Super Bowls? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, been riling up football fans for nearly 20 years. Kicking off the biggest night in sports. Your favorite team might not be able to sing as well as you, but you can't question their love for you. Take a look at this. Are you ready? I turn on my TV for a look big skin fun. Up, trying to miss it to the hill. <laughs> Did you like that? Oh, God. Well, thank goodness they played better than they can sing. Anyway, Hank, we all love you. And you know what? We wanted to show you our gratitude. And so everyone on the show tonight, well, they signed this ball. And this is just for you, my friend. 20 years, Hank. 20 more. God bless you. Love you, babe. Hey, Hank, congratulations. I think what you did for Monday Night Football through the years was, was tremendous. I mean, people would go around the country saying, are you ready for some football? You are a true giant in the industry. Yeah, Hank, congratulations. We enjoyed all those years, and you're a special guy, and you deserve this. Welcome back to CMT Giants. I always tell... Uh, Holly or Hillary, uh, Shelton, whoever, don't forget now, your grandmother, Audrey Williams, did way more shows than Hank did because he died. She was out there doing what she could. She was on that road doing shows, doing shows, doing shows, hauling me out there, doing shows, hauling Waylon out there, hauling Haggard out there, doing shows, hauling Kilgore out there. It had the right name, Audrey Williams' Caravan of Stars. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, Kenny Chesney. If you were going to find Hank Williams Jr. by any one aspect of what he does, it would have to be the way he handles a crowd, handles a stage, and brings the music home. Hank hit the road and gained experience playing to huge crowds beginning at age 14 singing his father's songs for 20,000 crazed fans in Detroit's Cobo Hall gave both Cephas a sense of how big it could really be. As Hank Jr. evolved from Hank Sr.'s songs to his own, he knew while it wasn't what Nashville was selling, the people appreciated his renegade style of music that had a hard rock feel. Fans bought tickets whether he was on the radio or not, and filled concert halls by the thousands. With those legendary high-energy performances, he played all kinds of instruments, danced around, and toyed with the crowd. His album started selling in the millions, and his songs began to dominate country radio. Hank Jr. became an unstoppable force with fans, and country music could no longer ignore him. In the 80s, Hank had a record-setting nine albums on the Billboard chart all at the same time. From 1986 to 1988, he won an unprecedented five straight Entertainer of the Year honors from the ACM and the CMA. That reign cemented his stature as country music's quintessential showman. That instinct to know what fans want remains. 
In 2007, Hank was inducted into the Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame. A songwriter, a storyteller, a singer, and a musician. But most of all, the man is a full tilt entertainer. Congratulations, Hank, for rocking country music like nobody else could, and like your dad, redefining just how intense this music can be. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Johnny Knoxville. Sorry about that, Hank. I meant to give you a whole bottle, but I had to wait backstage a little bit. Um, so the uh, folks at CMT were trying to think of the perfect person to introduce the song Whiskey Bent and Hellbound. And unfortunately, Gary Busey was not available. Steve-O is in jail. So they came to me. Growing up in the hills of Tennessee, Hank, I was a huge fan of yours, and I stand up here tonight a huge fan. Uh, God bless you. And uh, right now, to sing Whiskey Ben and Hellbound, we got Mr. Tim McGraw. A good woman at home who thinks I do no wrong. But sometimes, Lord, she just ain't always around. And you know that's when I fall. I can't help myself at all. And I'll get a whiskey bent. Baby, a song about a reverend man With a cold one in my hand Cause you know I love to hear them guitar sounds But don't you think I'm so lonesome I could cry Cause I'll get all balled up inside Get a whiskey bent and hell bound. Some honky tonk special I found. Just as sure as the morning sun comes, thinking about my sweet girl at home. And I need to get whiskey bent and hell bound. Play me a song about a rambling man. Put old Jim Beam in my hand. Cause you know I still love to get drunk and hear a country sound But don't you play your cheating heart Cause it'll tear me all apart And I'll get a whiskey bent and hell bound You'll take songs always and make me feel Performance by Hank himself is on the way. But next, a tribute from Jimmy Kimmel and Britton Wilson sings. Welcome back to CMT Giants. Ladies and gentlemen, Jimmy Kimmel. I am Jimmy Kimmel. Thank you. I'm talking to you from the bar next to my TV studio. 
This is the kind of place where Hank Williams Jr.'s music about hurting and heartache feel especially right. Um, can I get a sunburn fizzy lady? Okay. Thank you. Anyway, Hank, your music will stand the test of time, especially classics like Naked Women and Beer. Naked Women and Beer. We got it all here for your eyes and your ears. They show it all in the clear. Way up north and down south, woo, somebody shut my mouth. Thank you, Guillermo. Nake, 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 naked women. Nake, 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 naked women. Ice cold beer. It's all together in here. Naked women and beer. I almost get choked up saying those words. Hats off to you, Basifus. You're a great American. And this is a great sunburn fizzy lady. Thank you. You're welcome. Singing her favorite Hank song, please welcome Gretchen Wilson. Everybody 
and Merle Haggard were on the tour. I'm talking the early 60s, middle 60s, and they were arguing over which one of them was going to make it. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. Me and Merle talk about it all the time. Hag, man, they were going out there. So that's the environment I grew up in, getting that old, some kind of horrible motorhome that Waylon had would break down every hundred miles. You know? And of course, the bus we had wasn't much different. <laughs> Boy, this is fun being on tour. <laughs> At the time I was young enough, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. I didn't care. I was all for it. <laughs> I'm riding. I'm, I'm gonna ride with Waylon on his motorhome. <laughs> all good. Welcome back to CMT Giants. Please welcome Jessica Simpson. Hank was just three years old when his father passed away, and even though he was just a boy, Hank Sr.'s legend and lore were a major presence in his life. It was a relationship that Hank Jr. and another of his heroes, Waylon Jennings, <laughs> sang about in their 1983 duet, The Conversation. Here to sing that song tonight are Hank's daughter and Waylon's son. Please welcome my good friends, Holly Williams and Shooter Jennings. Now, Hank, let's talk about your daddy. Tell me how your mama loved that man. Just break out. I tell you about the drifting cowboy band. We won't talk about the habits, just, just the music and the man. Now, Holly, you just gotta tell me did your daddy really write all them songs? About your mama, come on. About the man who done her wrong. Yeah, get up on your feet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that memory gone crazy. Now that he's in calling the same. Now the ones that call him crazy are still riding on his name. He was here. Cephas, do they think that we were right? Do you think he might? He would, cause he's got one all around my mama, Lord. He be right here by our side. Every left for a soul to provo, he be the first one on the bus, and I'm ready to ride. That's the one to go to the hang, come on. Happy, yeah, and I hope he's doing well. Standing next to my dad, hand in hand. Come on.
Ladies and gentlemen, Toby Keith. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I was a little boy about five or six years old. My mother was 25 or 26, and she bought two tickets for her and her girlfriend to go to the Hank Williams Jr. show in Fort Smith, Arkansas. And uh, Hank was all dressed up in a nice suit, and they had him clean cut. And uh, he was singing a song called 11 Roses. I guess you've noticed. You know that one? Anyway, he was singing this song. And so years later go by, and the first time I got to meet him, we were in Louisville at the uh, State Fair about 10 years ago, I think. So I go over to his bus, and I'm going to go up and see the man, Bo Cephas, right? I said, uh, hey, man, I met you when I was five years old in Fort Smith, Arkansas, and you were singing a song called 11 Roses. And he goes, well, thank God I don't have to play that anymore, man. <laughs> you know <remember> that? <laughs> so, anyway. Hank went on to start dressing out of his own closet, singing his own songs, and surrounding himself with people that he could trust and that believed in the dream he did. So when my career got that way in the early 90s, I surrounded myself with people that I could believe in and surrounded myself. I started dressing out of my closet, singing my own songs because of you, Hoss. So, as an artist, it's so important to have somebody around you that you can trust completely all the time. And very few of us in this business have that kind of person in our lives. For nearly half a century, Hank Jr. did have that in his life, and it was his best friend and manager, Merle Kilgore. Yeah. Hank and Merle, they were a team. When Hank was 14, started his performing career, his mother called Merle and asked him to be his opening act. The two of them roomed together, rode endless hours on the bus together, and the process became best friends. Merle was a brother, father, mentor, co-conspirator, all rolled into one. He was there in the good times, he was there in the bad times. When Hank became the biggest act in country music and Nashville still refused to acknowledge him, it was Merle who finally got them to stand up and take notice. He took every record exec on Music Row to lunch and explained to them what they were missing out on. Merle was truly the man behind the legend. We should all be so blessed to have a friend like Merle Kilgore. Merle Kilgore would be uh, like a brother and a father. Someone that's always looking at the bright side of things. Back when I was, gosh, 14, he would borrow one of my guitars and maybe I had just gotten and go out there and scratch it all up on stage. <laughs> Doing his uh, Ring of Fire or uh, Wolverton Mountain, I'd tell Mama, I said, God, he scratched my guitar all to pieces, you know. But later on, I didn't care. After I got to know him, I was even scratch it all you want. <laughs> Yeah, boy, talk about the history that me and him had. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, when you lose somebody that's been with you 40 years like that, it's a big deal. Back to CMT Giants. Now to honor Hank Jr., please welcome Kid Rock. Been quite a night, brother. Quite a night. And we talk about a, a father and a brother and a friend. Someone who's honest, whose heart runs on his own clock, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and I mix a lot of music, hip hop and country and rock and roll and rhythm and blues and gospel. And guess where I learned that from? Why does Hank deserve this tribute tonight? Because he put some balls in country music. He's the real deal. There's not a lot of people that tell me what to do in this life. There's not a lot of people that I look up to and respect in a manner like I do Hank. Because of Hank, I quit smoking cigarettes. Because of Hank, because of Hank, I quit doing other funny stuff, if you know what I'm talking about. 
because I respect him. He's been like a father figure and taught me so much, but he hangs out with me like a brother. What can I say? Hank Williams Jr. fans are. I see every one of you out there. We're from North California and South Alabama and little bitty towns all over this land. I know the difference and the phony stuff and the real stuff, because I had the phony stuff for a long time when I was growing up. I only deal in the real stuff. My fans are the most loyal, hardcore fans in country music, period. and I hate that <laughs> I could care less about that you got it but that was the devil talking <laughs> I've gone out here and I have seen the light <laughs> yes, amen The devil was trying to keep me away from Southern California. But no, I went up to Detroit. I went down to Florida and they said, Bo Sebas, you got a lot of love waiting on you out there. And I'm so glad that I came here to accept your love and give you a whole lot back. Thank you very much. Things 
you know that I want most of all Is the freedom of the rivers and the pine They don't do no hunting and fishing up there at all But I have met a few squirrels on a porcupine If this is the promised land I've had all I can stand Wish I were down in Montgomery town tonight I just don't fit in Dixie on my mind Hey, I'm a bit stuck somewhere with Dixie on your mind Do you want a drink? Do you want to party? This is Rockin' Randall Hank. I'm gonna get the thing started. Thank you for coming here. I won't forget it. It's very special to me.